Well, hello and welcome aboard. I think it's only fair to start this project by making the base plate, which we can then mount everything else to. Um, the scrapyard only had these two slabs here, which combined will make for the proper length, but um, that's okay because for now I'll take them both separate and uh, machine them down to rough dimensions, which makes life a bit easier here. Um, we'll have to weld them both together eventually, but for now it's really advantageous to have them separate. I'm glad I made myself this little chip collector here because it sure saves you a lot of work on uh, shop cleanup. Next I think it makes most sense to do the cutouts in the middle which uh, will then form the feet on which the base plate is standing. We'll do that with a 45 degree tool and I'll just move side to side with this thing back and forth. In order to make sure that both parts align well during welding, I'm going to drill pinholes in here and ream them to size so that I can combine them both together nicely without any faulty alignment. To keep both halves together, I'm going to point weld them first, and uh, once we've got that established, I'm going to go through the entire length. I can't say I'm too terribly disappointed. Um, you know, the both the joints look really nice, and since we're on my surface plate, aka window sill here, you can see that there's no uh, flexing or deviation deformation due to welding, which surprises me because um, what I learned during welding. Um, Whenever you weld anything really you're going to get some kind of distortion in any direction you didn't anticipate But then again if you anticipate any kind of distortion then you didn't anticipate no distortion So that rule holds true <laughs> Get a load of this guy eh? 
Um, what we're going to do next is, uh, of course, clean up the solder joints. I'm not sure as to how far I'm going to clean up this. Probably just blend in the radius because nobody's going to be looking underneath here anyway. And uh, get this surface smooth and uh, then we can deal with getting the angles on the sides. So uh, we didn't clean up all the way. Right in here there is a section where probably due to the parallels sticking out so far we didn't clean up. So we're going to do it again. And again and again and again. For the angles, I'm going to rotate the uh, table here, and um, in order to do that, I'm going to have to empty it out first, at least in order to make it a pleasant thing to do. So let's see how much this uh, chip catcher actually saved me in labor, or what amounts of chips I bought too much. Well, that's about a quarter full. This is heavy. So uh, instead of mounting it in the vise, I decided to put the uh, plate up right onto the table uh, for two main reasons. The first reason, which is the most important one, is that um, with the angles now cut here, um, you would get problems clamping it because it would only make contact in this middle part here and the edges would kind of float in the air. And uh, that, of course, would be terrible if you tried to machine the very end of it for leverage and so on. And the second reason is I got myself a brand new set of uh, clamps, which uh, come included with step blocks and uh, studs in various lengths, and uh, I just wanted to try them out. So, here we go.
Alright, that's it for this part. Um, shaping on the main body is done for now and um, I would like to invite you to take a look at part 2 next week where we're going to do the cutout for the flywheel in the middle and machine all the little solder on external parts like for example the mounting lugs or the mounts for the water pump and the crosshead guides which is going to be a little project in itself I guess. So there we go, thank you very much for watching and bye bye.